In this video, we'll be going over the torsion formula. In this section, we'll derive the torsion formula and relate internal torque to the shear stress distribution acting on the cross section of the shaft. This internal torque is created when external torque is applied to the shaft. If you don't quite understand what this means, don't worry, we'll be discussing this throughout the section. On this slide, we'll be deriving the equation used to determine the shear stress at any point along row. In order to develop this equation, we'll need the equation we developed in the previous section in addition to the Hooke's Law. We're only able to use the Hooke's Law if we make the assumption that the material is linear elastic. From the previous section, we already know the relationship between shear strain and the maximum shear strain. If you want to use this equation, we'll have to rearrange the formula and isolate for gamma max over gamma like so. We'll label this equation as equation 1. Next, we'll be using the Hooke's Law. The general equation for the Hooke's Law is the shear stress tau equals the shear modulus g multiplied by the shear strain gamma. Likewise, the maximum shear stress equals the shear modulus multiplied by the maximum shear strain. Notice how both equations have the common variable g. We can utilize both equations by isolating for g and equating the two equations like so. Just as equation 1, we'll isolate for gamma max over gamma and we'll label this equation as equation 2. Now we can substitute equation 2 into equation 1. If we isolate for shear stress, we'll end up with the formula that's used to determine the shear stress at any point along row. Just as shear strain, shear stress due to torsion varies linearly from zero at the axis to a maximum at the outer surface. The resultant moment T is equivalent to the internal distribution tau. In other words, if we can figure out the shear stress distribution acting on the cross section, we'll be able to figure out what T is. We'll accomplish this by using rho, tau, and dA. Note shear stress times dA represents the force, while rho represents the lever arm. Now if we use these variables and solve for the integral of the cross section from 0 to R, we'll be able to get T. In most cases, we won't be given the shear stress directly, and so we have to replace tau with another equation. To do so, we'll need the equation we derived on the previous slide. We can substitute tau with known variables rho and c and the unknown variable tau max. Now we'll remove tau max and c from the integral because these values remain constant. Notice this part here. This integral is equivalent to the polar moment of inertia j. We can further simplify this equation by replacing the integral with the symbol j. Now, if we rearrange the equation and solve for tau max, we'll end up with this formula here. In this slide, we'll go in more depth and explain what the variables represent and its corresponding units. Tau max represents the maximum shear stress. As previously mentioned, it occurs at the outer surface of the shaft. The units for tau max are megapascals or newtons over millimeters square. T represents the resultant internal torsional moment. It's usually determined through the use of the method of sections. The unit for T is newtons times millimeters. C represents the outer radius of the shaft. The unit for C is millimeters. J represents the polar moment of inertia of the cross-sectional area. This variable is purely dependent on the geometry of the shaft. The unit for J is millimeters to the power of 4. Depending on whether the shaft is solid or hollow, the following equation can be used. If the shaft is solid, C is simply the outer radius of the shaft. However, if it's hollow, then you have to use both the outer and inner radius denoted by CO and CI respectfully. Also note, if you're interested in the maximum shear stress within the shaft, then the following formula can be used instead, where rho is the distance from the axis to the point of interest within the shaft. 
similar to shear stresses resulting from direct shear or bending, equilibrium of any given element in a circular shaft subjected to torsional moments requires a shear stress on the plane of the cross section and a longitudinal shear stress along the axial plane. The general procedure to solve these kinds of questions are as follows. The first step is to determine the torsional moment T at the section of interest through the method of sections. The next step is to compute the polar moment of inertia J. The final step is to utilize the values from the first two steps to determine the shear stress at the point of interest. And this concludes the video for this section regarding the torsion formula. In this video, we derive the torsion formula and discuss the relationship between the torsional moment T and the shear stress tau. We also talked about the general procedure required to solve torsion questions. In the following video, we'll be doing an example for this section.